What's going on, everybody? Let me get some people in the chat. Come on. Let me get some of you guys in the chat. It's been a while. Come on, everybody. I want to see what you guys are doing. It is. It is. Come on, everybody. Wait till I get a few guys in here. Come on. Come on. Damn, I didn't even get the jump. My phone didn't even send me the notification. If any of you guys are joining and viewing, just uh, write what's up, something in the chat. I uh, hope you guys are having a great hump day, Wednesday, and everything like that. I haven't got the uh, alert either yet. Oh, just got it. Just got the alert. Robinhood, it's oh, wow. App that lets I actually sent commercials stocks, and everything. And what's going on, everybody? Who's watching? Who's watching? Who's in the chat? What's going on, everybody? Who's watching? Who's watching? Oh, wow, that's crazy echo, too. Wow, okay, you're getting six people in here. What's going on, everybody? Anybody signing in? You know, it's time to ask those questions. It's been a while. I'm waiting till I get a few more people in there. Uh, it's been a little delayed, so I know you guys are getting the notifications like a minute or two later, but I just wait till we get a few people in there. But I hope you guys are having a great hump day, no matter wherever you guys are at. And, you know, I know you guys want to ask me a bunch of questions, so uh, you guys got me for the next hour. It is 6.03. Uh, PM uh, Eastern. Um, if you guys are in Cali, it's probably like five, four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And if you're on the other side of the world, which I do have a few Australians in here and some people from um, England and UK and everything like that, and even uh, Russia, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, what's going on, man? So we got first some a few people in here. You guys are already saying, what's up, man? I hope you guys are having a great hump day. You guys hear me well? Let me know if you hear me well. Just put like an exclamation mark or a letter or something like that. Uh, Mango, just on my Q50, I watch your videos religiously. Appreciate that, Mango, very much. Uh, Gerald, oh, what's up? What's up with the hoses? Hose or hoses? <laughs> I like that one. Happy hump day. Um, what's going on, KK Boss? I need an interior kit for my Q50 Red Sport. Um, you would have to hit the dealer up for that one um, because those, those are the only ones that like plug right in. But that's about it. There's no real aftermarket solution I've seen for the uh, the light kit. Um, what's going on, Captain? Uh, NYS Fly Guy, how do you promote YouTube? How to promote YouTube channel? I'm a G37 uh, channel. Well, that's a good question, bro. Um, honestly, uh, you just got to start. Well, first, you got to just honestly just start putting content out there. Uh, start making videos. Um, depending on how you are, you could be a vlogger or a person like to do hands on stuff or just whatever you choose to do or uh, record it or uh, do a lot of hashtags. And also one of the things I did when I first started under 5,000 subscribers, I would say under a thousand subscribers is I was, a, I was in a lot of um, Facebook groups. So I would make videos and promote it from there. So if I was in a G37 group, I'd be like, Hey guys, I did this on my G37. Just go take a look at it. If you like it, subscribe. So that was the way I promoted my um, uh, G37 channel. I mean, a uh, channel. Uh, what's going on? I, I don't know how to pronounce that, but how much is a 2019 Q60 Lux? Well, if it's in, uh, it's about 25, 26 thousand. Well, 2019 though, that's probably about a little over 30 thousand, depending on the miles. But the, the newer Infinities are losing their price really quick. Zach says, "What's up, man? Got a four, got a 400 Red Sport Q50. I love your videos. I appreciate that, Zach Garcia. Mango side skirts, yes or no? Um, post the link." Um, not really a fan of side skirts. I think what company makes side skirts that I do? I think it's Impole, Impole, Impole that makes side skirts. I like theirs, but all other side skirts I don't like unless it's like a little that little carbon fiber lip people add onto the OEM side skirt. Um, okay, what's up, KK? Draw hoses or <laughs> I like that. Uh, what's up? Love the channel, bro. Pre appreciate that very much. Ill for you. Let me go do it on here because I'm trying to do it off, off my um, computer. I'll just do it off here. It makes more sense. Okay, let me see. Give me a second, guys. I just want to go through the comments and everything. But I hope you guys are having a great hump day. Happy Wednesday. Happy whatever you're doing. Hope you guys are safe. I hope your family's safe. The corona bear is going around. I can't say what it actually is because you'll get the monetized video if you say it. So the corona bear is going around. And you just got to protect your family. Wash your hands. Just make sure you're good, man. I don't want none of you guys to get sick. Or I'm an older dude, but I'm not really going to get sick, but I could give it to like my mother or my grandmother or you get what I'm trying to say. So just be careful out there, guys. Um, 
Okay. Well, channel K, Kuz, as, as, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Zach says, man, should I get a, a JB4 with blow valve? Would it help to get both at the same time? Well, the blow valve is just a safeguard and it adds nice noises. That's it. It isn't gonna, it's not going to gain you any extra power. You can get a blow valve right now on your stock car and it'll still blow off. Um, um, sorry, I mean Q60 windshield price. Honestly, bro, when it comes to windshields, I don't know the prices of that, but I do know we have that little map or something on the, the windshield, and usually that makes it more expensive. From our maximum days of a replacement windshield with that little specific piece with the um rear rear, rear mirror, but rear mirror was about two hundred and like fifty dollars. It was expensive, and that was just for like the windshield, but it's probably a lot more than that because you know these are newer cars. Um, thank you. Learned a lot from your channel. Thank you, uh, Juni uh, Barbero. Um, Captain, what do you think about front suspension and shock absorber? Uh, Captain, you got to re-emphasize that. What do I think about front suspension and shock absorber? For what? Okay. Uh, Mango, if I go JB4 only doing map 2 and map 3, something like, what internals do I need if I need any at all? Better question, what maps can I run stock? Well, Mango, if you have JB4, um, they recently... I've, I've been I have to brush up on my new JB4 maps because they have version eight now uh, on the JB4, which actually changed up the maps. I thought that they still have map seven as seven PSI above stock, but they actually changed it and made uh, map eight um, the valet map, map seven the uh, meth slash meth uh, meth uh, map, and then map six is actually I believe map plus seven. So, yes, if you do map one or map two, like you had asked, um, you don't need anything. These cars are pretty stout from factory. Um, Red Sports usually take right around four to five PSI above stock before they start running into some, some fueling issues, depending on how rich the fuel is. And um, if you are, let's say, a 3.0T, regular 300 horsepower version, most people are pushing seven to eight to nine PSI. So yeah, it's pretty stout. You don't these cars. You don't need to change internals or anything like that. This is not a Subaru. If, no, I mean some Subaru guys might be in here, but you guys, know what I'm talking about, it's hard for a Subaru to get over 400 wheel, or it's gonna like lose its pistons. You know what I'm just saying? So, um, let me see. Uh, Baba Car says, "Hey, Bulls, got the Garrett turbos." Ooh. Also, from an insider, we can expect Q50 news soon. Yeah. AMS is going to drop all the information soon. Um, also, Q80 will be debuted soon. Seven series competitor. Also, some Infinities will, with CVT, will replace with nine speed. I hope to God they replace some of those. Why is the CVT still around? But I understand for eco for the majority of people. But we like our traditional um, transmissions. And yes, they have to bring out the, the Q80, though. I thought they were going to release the Q70, which will take over. The current Q70, but I guess they want to just jump right above it just to make a, a literally a, a brand ambassador for the um for the whole uh community itself. Okay. Uh L4, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody's questions here. Captain, did you restate what you said, bro? I didn't I didn't see you uh, rewrite what you said, Captain. Um thinking about getting a Q50, but lately it seems you have been having all types of problems. And they haven't went away. There's I still have more problems, but um, at ill for you, you're actually saying something that's true, but comparing my issues to other cars on the market, they're really not cr nothing crazy. So most of my issues can't come from me modifying the car. So me lowering the car and pretty much messing up my axles and breaking the engine mount, that is just from me doing car, stupid car stuff. Um, this oil leak that I'm having now that I'm still chasing, um, yeah, that's still there. I didn't bring the video out, but... Well, I replaced it, but it's actually something a little bit worse. Um, I still haven't been. There's a drain feed to, to the turbo that I can't access. That's leaking, too. So I'm going to have to figure it out within the next week or two. But, yes, that turbo is still leaking, but the turbo is not bad. I took a look at the turbo. It's just the feed gasket itself. I'll have to change it for the feed, not the drain. I changed the drain already. So, yeah. If, you, if any of you guys are watching right now, just add me on IG, Boost in Motion, if you have an Instagram. Because to be honest, you guys watch me here, but on Instagram, everyone knows everything first. Like, I'm way more hands-on to talk with everybody back and forth on Instagram. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, add, add me at Boost in Motion on Instagram. Um, you guys get to know everything first. It's crazy. Um, 
Well, give me a second, guys. Well, I'm actually having a few people hit me up on Instagram right now. Can't talk to you guys right now. Uh, sorry, man. Okay, love your videos, bro. We can get a nice exhaust and takes from. We says we can get a nice exhaust and intake for. I guess you mean where at Nismo? Um, it's really up to you, bro. I mean, there's plenty of different places online that you can order intakes and exhaust from. Fast Intentions, Arc. Uh, you go cheap like me, Rev Nine. <laughs> you also have AMS and a few other intakes on the market. Um, Matt, I uh, love your channel. Looking at getting a 2016 Red Sport in the next month or two. Little worried about first year production and belt issue. The belt issue will always be there, Matt. Um, just want you to know. As a serpentine, for guys who are watching right now, I already have a Q50 3.0T or want to get one in the future. The serpentine belt issue is highly inflated. You guys think taking it as, oh my God, the car is unreliable. No. The belt issue is basically um, the serpentine belt. That goes around. That's for accessories for the AC and uh, the alternator. What happens is nobody's changing them out. So in my own case, I did change my belt within the first eight thousand miles because it started squeaking. But other people have forty, fifty thousand out, fifty thousand miles on the original serpentine belt. These things are supposed to be changed out. They made a rubber and like cord. They're gonna pop. Also, we're, we're gone are the days when we used to have adjustable um, tensioner pulleys. So this is for some of my older cats who are watching. You know what I, you guys know what I'm talking about. When you have to adjust the tensioner pulley to adjust the belt. Um, right nowadays, the newer tensioners are all spring loaded, and there are the the spring that's in this one is very strong. So not only is this rubber belt spinning around in a hot engine bay, because you guys know what rubber does when it gets hot, it gets becomes pliable. But on top of that, it has this spring loaded tensioner that's pushing on it that starts to pretty much stretch out this rubber belt in heat. And guess what happens after so much time? It's gonna pop. So that's what I have to attribute it with. And don't take the rubber, the, the serpentine belt as something to, be, to scare you away. There's an indicator that shows you how stretched, the, how stretched the belt starts to become on the tensioner itself. This is part of the service manual. So people don't even know that. Um, uh, okay, shot Shanti. Okay, what's up Boots? Can we get a remote tune from AMS? Yes. Yes, you can. Ashante, you can definitely get a remote tune from AMS. You get it from B28 Performance. You can get it from Z1 Motorsports. You can see it from especially Z. You get it from RT Tuning. Everybody has a remote tune that they can give you. So it's not only AMS. Um, boss, Q, uh, Q50 RS Sport A and carbon fiber dash kit uh, accessories like black or, uh, emblems or logos. I'm, I'm very confused at KK Boss. Um, if you want to get the carbon fiber dash kit, and accessories, I've seen some on people's cars, uh, VR30, VR Dirty on um, Instagram. He had a, a carbon fiber dash can. It looks really good on his car. I really did, really did like it very much. Um, Mango, should I get a cold air intake or a short ram? Get a cold air intake. That's it. Don't don't get short rams. doesn't make no sense. Um, Shante, what do you think about HKS coilovers? Heard really, I don't know anybody with HKS coilovers, but... They're really expensive, and if they're really expensive, usually that means they put a lot of R&D and time to make them good. But I can't tell you to go get them because I know no one of them that have them right now at this current moment. But they're quite expensive. I would rather you go get RSRs because at least I know a few people who actually have RSRs, and they like, they really love it. Um, whew, One second, guys. Uh, Flame. Sup, man? What's going on, Flame Integrity? Uh, Captain, I did 13K and I can hear a kind of a metal friction when I drive on a rubber on rubber bumps and I got sidewall bump on my front tire with vibration, 100 kilometers. Okay, so your original question from before was, what do you think about the front suspension and the shock absorbers? Well, um, to be honest, if you hear a metal to metal, metal friction noise, you got to take a look at that. I, I wouldn't know what to tell you because it's at the end of the day, this is the internet, and I'm not an internet mechanic. I just know from what I have experienced and what I've, but that I've never really heard of that metal friction noise and driving over bumps. But your suspension did what it's supposed to do. If you're having vibrations in the steering wheel, um, I would say you gotta look and see. You said you already got a, you pretty much got a bubble in your tire that can add to the bump, or the, one of the belts in your tire might have broke so when the belts break in the tire you start to develop a bump and yeah the car's just going to do, 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 do or you might have a bend in your wheel too so you got to take a look whenever we uh drive in new york we go through some 
<laughs> really crazy crappy road. So definitely take a look at the suspension components and see where you might have a bend in the wheel, a, a pretty much a bump in the tire, a broken cord, and hopefully it's nothing else worse because anything else worse, you start running into other issues. Okay, Mango. Okay, what brand or cash can do you think do you think is the best bank for its buck? Well, at this current moment, we only have two companies that make an oil cash can, Mishimoto, and we have um, AdW, uh, AdW1. AdW1 did sponsor me, but I, if you guys know me, know, know what I like to do, I always like to go with the cheaper, more expensive, uh, more affordable brand, and AdW1 is doing pretty good, and it's a lot more customizable, too, so if you guys want to check them out, AdW1. Okay. Uh, oh, and then Zach had asked, "How how is your cash can performing?" Cash cans per performing pretty great. Um, the last a few of my videos, guys, I usually end up like if I'm working on the engine bay, I usually check it, and you guys can see a lot of oil in it. Still working pretty fine. If you guys want to go and get an eBay cash can and pretty much mock up your own kit, you can do that too. I'm not gonna do that, but these cash cans are pretty much very similar. Some of them just don't have a baffling system, but this one does. If you get one that's cheap and has a baffling system, you, all you just need is a vacuum line. So that's all, and just run it yourself. And some clamps, you're good to go. This is, that's for the more of the DIY guys. Um, Superboy, hey, so I'm changing my premium base bumper to sports bumper. What would you need to do the conversion? I did that conversion on my 2015, too. Um, I just had, excuse me, I had the premium bumper to sport. All you need is the bumper. Um, you're gonna need the bumper. You're gonna need the bottom grill, the bottom grill bezel, and uh, I believe you're gonna need the two fog light inserts. Not the fog lights, the fog light inserts. But most of those eBay, Amazon kits are really good. They're about nine out of ten condition, uh, condition, uh, quality, as people have been saying. Um, and they usually come with everything you need. And you could just swap over the um, grill. That's from what I remember. Um, otherwise than that, yeah, that should, maybe the little bottom trim spot, trim piece, but I'm not too positive about that. It's like the, it's like under the bumper, but I really can't remember, but I did that conversion on my, um, 2015 and it wasn't too much stuff. It, you just really need the bumper, the bezel, the middle bezel and the two fog light inserts. You can swap over the fog lights, the headlights swap over and you can swap over the grill. Some of you guys may have sensors in your, um, in your bumpers. So you got to get the one with the holes too. Uh, that was that Superboy. Okay. Uh, Mescas. Hey, Boos, you brought, you brought me into the Q50 group. You have been very informative. Thanks so much. I appreciate that, Mescas53. I, I, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Airplane Rogers is putting a VR30 DETT in a... I mean, why not? Why not? There's a few people online right now that are putting this VR30 in a 370Z and 350Z. So... I don't see the difference in putting it in the G35. And guess what? Everybody's saying that it goes right into the engine mount. So, like, there's no special engine mounts or anything that needs to be done. It just slides right in and bloop. That's literally how interchangeable these cars are. It's insane. But they're, but these 370Zs aren't really running yet. I mean, only, like, the big shops like Z1 Motorsports and Concept Z have done these motor swaps or transmission swaps. But... Uh, a few other people, are, like well, uh, this guy, I forgot his name. He's from Florida. I've been watching his channel. He's putting a VR30 uh, in a 370Z. And there's another guy I'm watching put in a 350Z. So it's pretty cool. So just go, you know, YouTube them and um, take a look at what they're doing. All right. Uh, I want to see best exhaust for 3.7. I have a 37, but motor dying too expensive. Don't want a single exit. I mean, most people like single exits because they sound great. I, it's just that, you know, if you got like, you know, this type of issue, if you take a look at it, like, I, I can't, it has to have two exits. Um, <laughs> but no pun intended there. But um, I can't tell you the best exhaust, bro. Um, you just look up a few YouTube videos. And if you like the, the sound clips, purchase that exhaust. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to the 3.7 and the 3.0T, it's just, to me, it's just what you like the sound of and how the tips look. Uh, my own exhaust, I actually do not like how the tips look on my exhaust because they're four inches. But I like the exhaust. I just don't like the tips. So I'm probably going to end up changing the tips in the next month or two to like a three and a half or a three inch. I just I don't like how big it is. Um, Sorry at NYZ. I wish I could have gave him a little bit more help there. Flame, I got a remote tool from AMS. Insane results. Highly recommend. Want to go fast with AMS. 
Oh, yeah, I, at Flame Integrity, yes. I'm going to shout out AMS because they were one of the first to the game and they were doing everything right at the end of the day. But there are other tuners out there who, who do charge about half the price and you could get similar results because not everybody can afford AMS tax. That's what I'm going to say. Um, and there's more 3 3. Keep up the videos, bro. Hope you get to intake and exhaust my manifold sometime. Clean up the engine a little bit. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, okay. Um, Captain, the vibration is on the brake pedals. Oh, so then that your rotors are bad, bro. If you're getting, if you're pressing the brake pedal and you're getting pulsation in it, that means your uh, rotors are probably warped. Usually, you get warped rotors after so much heat cycling, so you just gotta change your front rotors, or maybe your brake pads are getting low too. I don't. You gotta take a look or take it into a shop. At Captain, okay. Uh, Steve, love your channel, brother. Great info. Just picked up a Q50 RS, planning on some longevity upgrades. Keep up the great work and informative videos. Thank you very much, Steve. I do appreciate that very much. You guys don't understand. Like, I really appreciate my viewership. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't keep making videos. Because sometimes, like, I got YouTube, right? But I also got Instagram. Instagram, you guys are, like, on my neck. Like, hey, what's up? Like, it's a lot. But I understand that's what Instagram instagram is for to, to communicate a little easier that's why i don't go live that much on here because I, what, so what is it about almost twenty thousand subscribers i can't imagine talking to 600 you guys um as a youtuber i watch um uh i think it's called alejandro alejandro flores i believe or something like that um he's a mustang channel he'll have like 700 people on his live and i'm just like it's insane i couldn't imagine just trying to talk to all those people the comments just go <laughs> I, you just can't. At that point, you just can't. Um, let me see. What's good, Boost? Okay, cool. What's good, Boost? What's a good break, a brand brake rotor for 16 RS OEM aftermarket? Aftermarket solid drilled. Woo! This is a good question. Um, for all the stuff that I read, only from reading, and also from my, not with this car, but with like my Maxima days when I tried out regular blanks drilled drilled and slotted and slotted this is when this is this is when i want to be fast and furious um honestly when it comes to daily driving you guys are not going to see re the real difference you guys are really not going to see the difference depending on the road you got you will not see it you will not feel the difference what i would tell you is this if you get slotted right you're going to start getting like this helicopter noise because the brake pad is being scraped against um uh, against the brake pads. It won't be a loud, it won't be loud, but you will hear it. Um, drilled, what happened with me, depending on the brake pad you get go with, um, if they don't do the drill prop, the drill, they have to like drill it and dimple it at the same time because what would happen is the brake uh, material will start clogging up the holes depending on how, how hot you get the brake pad. Um, drilled and slotted, the same thing. And just regular rotors, honestly, we're just perfectly fine. After going through all those um, different drill, drilled and slotted, slotted, I said, you know what? You can't beat just get a regular blank rotor and call it in a day. You know what was the most important to me? Um, let me just say your name again. Um, at Marquise, you want to know the most best thing, important thing I would always recommend? A good brake pad. Get a. I would rather you spend a good amount of money on a really good brake pad and just have regular blank rotors because you're going to get the best brake. Uh, we'll have the less amount of brake fade. Um, the, the pedal usually feels a lot better and just better heat retention. Just, just all around the, the pad is just better. I'd rather do that. To me, rotors are just for necessarily appearances when you start drilling holes into them. Okay. So I would say blank rotor. Uh, okay. Uh, Mango, what should I do for exhaust? Don't want to want it too loud because I live in a quiet neighborhood. Bit okay, cool. I mean, to be at Mango, I don't know what to tell you, man. Everybody's ears are different. I'm I'm 32 right now. I'm an older dude, so even though my car is kind of loud, <laughs> I can hear it. I can start it up and hear it from right now from where I'm at. But yeah, it's still pretty loud. Okay, but some people actually just want a little bit of a noise, like. Remember when the G37 first came out? It had a little bit of a hum to it, just from factory. Some people like that, but other people say that's oh, that's too too loud. They want it quieter than that. So it's just it's up to you. It's acquired taste. Um, I really wish I could tell you what exhaust to go with, but 
what I would always recommend is um, if you want to go with the quietest exhaust, you can always go with the Infinity uh, Sport exhaust that they make and just try that out and just leave the cat, leave your cats in, leave the stock wide pipe, stock mid pipe, and just do an axle back with the mufflers. That's it. Don't do a muffler delete or muffler delete kit. Get the ones that come with the two resonators just for your axle back. That usually gives you the bump in sound without making it crazy loud. Anything else, you're just changing the sound, like deleting your resonators, your OEM resonators, or uh, delete, or uh, just don't do that. No. Okay, uh, let me speed up a little bit. So, oh, Superboy, okay, thank you. Cool. Jordan White, is it pointless to buy an AMS high pressure fuel pump, low pressure fuel pump, and not run E85? That's a good question at Jordan. Wait, hold on, Jordan. I got to shout out just another M340. What's going on, brother? Hope you're feeling well. Everything's doing well with you, brother. Much love to you. Um, you said echo this weekend. Let's line up between Q50 and M340. Um, I'm actually working this weekend, bro. Like, I'm sorry I won't be able to go. But I wouldn't mind it. I do have a slight oil leak on my uh, driver's side turbo. Um, the oil feed line is leaking a little bit. I did change the drain uh, feed gasket, but the oil the oil feed gasket is leaking. The drain uh, gasket is uh, fixed, but the other one's not. So, I, But I can still drive. I've been beating them. It's not like it's a crazy leak. It's just that it is there, and I know it's prevalent. All right, I got to go back to this question. Jordan White asked a good question. Is it pointless to buy AMS high pressure, low pressure fuel pump and not run E85? Um, at Jordan, to be quite honest, um, it, the only thing, only reason why I would see why you would want to buy a high pressure and low pressure fuel pump is to run a higher amount of PSI, right? And if you're going to run this amount of PSI, let's say you want to run 20, just, just hear me out. I'm not telling you guys to go and run 22, 23, 24 PSI and tell you 20. Yeah, Boost said, give me 24 PSI out the gate. No, I'm not telling you that because everyone knows that these turbos right around their sweet spot is around 18. You may go above it a little bit. Some tuners have one above 18, 19, 20, to even 21 PSI, but they bump it down really quick. They just want to get the numbers. But um, if you want to run higher PSI, um, usually you're going to need more demand of fuel. So the low pressure fuel pump will start to starve itself and fuel pressure will start to go down once you start getting into the 20 PSI territory at a higher RPM, especially for the um, high pressure fuel pump too. It can do its thing at OEM uh, high pressure fuel pump, but the low pressure side will go down after you go above 20 PSI at the higher RPM and you're going to run into oil, uh, gas starvation. And if you run into gas starvation, you run lean, then you can go boom, boom, boom. So we're not doing that. Um, that's, the only, that's the only reason why I would say you would do that. Um, the second way you would do that is if you got upgraded turbos. So if you have upgraded turbos from, let's say, RT Tuning or Pure, they run higher PSI, but they're more efficient at delivering more uh, cubic, I would say, inches. Some of you guys correct me, cubic inches of air to the motor. So if you deliver more cubic inches of air, that means you need more fuel. So that's why I would see that would make sense. Uh, other than e running E85. All right. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. That was a good question. I was I like that. I like that, Jordan. I really like that question. Okay. Uh, Zach, definitely agree with the exhaust. You got to get what you think sounds good. I got a still in cab back and I love it. That's what I'm talking about. Isaiah, okay. Audi S5 2013 and 2016 Mario versus Q60 RS. Which one? I've been looking at both and don't know which direction I want to go in. Um, is that S5? Sorry, Isaiah, for getting to you so late. I got to speed this up. Isaiah, is that S5 supercharged uh, V6? Is that the supercharged one? Or is it when Audi decided to make it single turbo uh, V6? Because I know they did that some period. So just let me know. Uh, Pepper Smith, hey, Boos, was planning on going to NYC Auto Show. They moved this August. Infinity supposed to have the 2021 Q50 there not a concept really well this corona this corona you know beard that's going around because i can't say vi you know virus i can't say it all together because i don't want to get demonetized but um yeah they are moving it to that far to august that's insane uh captain keep it up bro thanks thank you captain mango race me or laugh i'll just kill it i'm slow i'm not that quick guys i'm pretty slow i'm really there's so much other Q50, Q60s out there that you guys don't know how fast they are. I'm humble to them dudes because they, they're they pushing 550. 
500, 550, 600 wheel. And these guys are these guys are becoming the, the pioneers. I'm pushing the limits of, the, of this vehicle now. So I got to give these guys this look for a full fledged shout out. But I, my car is pretty quick for just the street. But yeah, flame integrity mango. That's how you want it. Silent VA killer. <laughs> Get cutouts for the win. A few people have cutouts, but I don't really see the gain in it. I think it's just something just to add noise necessary unless you put the cutouts right after the wide pipe or like right on the first bend off the wide pipe. That's the only way I can see it being some kind of benefit. And you'll have to have like full down pipes or something like that. Uh, Shanti, how much for the BBK you got and when is the video coming for the conversion? Um, I got the BBK for like 250 275 about a few months ago, um, but to be honest, I have so much other things that I want to deal with this car first because I have to get this car race ready. Like this oil leak isn't that bad that I can't go race, but it's just that I don't want it to get worse. So I'd rather take care of it because I'm going to be going to Mata Fame Royal Race events and Dig Race events in the next few months. It has one. He has one every month. So I'm going to all three. So I need this car to be at the slightest. The BBK adds a lot more weight to um, unsprung weight. So I don't want to take away any of the wheel of horsepower or anything. I just I'll wait and do that a few months down the line. Um, one second, guys. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me just get to this question. Uh, Marquise, any suggestions on brand or brake pad? I appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, bro, uh, to be honest, I've tried EBC, Hawks, um, regular Ecobeno. Is it Ecobeno? Act one or whatever brake pads. Um, I never tried our own concepts or stop tech, but it seems like no one really complains about those. But after all the ones I've tried within the brands I've just named, I used to be, I also tried AutoZone brake pads and uh the yeah, Dora Last brake pads too. So um out of all of them, I would say even Wagner, I, for my brake safety, like what I do on a day will drive on a daily, I use Hawk 5.0 brake pads. They have them in um, non-sport uh, calipers and sport calipers. The only reason why I use them is they take a little while to get heated up after daily use. They take a little bit while, but they still have great cold performance. And when they start getting hot, and I don't mean hot like you've been driving and you're just pressing a brake. No, I'm talking about hot when you're doing pulls and you're coming back down to like 60, 75, or 75. They keep getting better. So like their heat tolerance and their heat fade is just like way like they don't heat fade as much but you can get your brake pads to a limit always remember that but and also finally they dust up a lot they dust up a lot when you want better brake performance guys if you're listening to me you will get dust on your wheels it's gonna be it's just it's just the trade-off all right you want a quiet pad quiet pad no dust but you're not gonna have you can't go hang out with a bunch of fast cars because you're gonna lose brake feel that's all i'm saying all right, uh, give me a second. I want to go through these questions a little bit better. Uh, Jordan, thank you, bro. Flame integrity. Okay, you think the exhaust? Oh, Alfredo says you think exhaust heat exchanger lower down pipes tune is good for now, and then catch cam blow up valves a bit after, perhaps cool and take further down the line. Yeah, man, you could. Yo, listen, with these cars, you can take your time. You don't have to go and do everything at the same time. From factory, they don't have blow up valve slash diverter valve. So stop trying to fix their engineering problem. Get to that when you get to it. Um, the the catch can, the GT500, they give you a, a, a catch can with the car because they said, boy, this is going to have a lot of blow by. So they even thought about that. They didn't have a catch can on this car. You have a, P, a PCV system on this car that's supposed to do that, but it doesn't catch the oil. You still have a lot of blow by gases. Just get to it when you get to it. Don't rush the process, man. Never rush the process, guys. I have a YouTube channel. I've been doing it for two, three years now. Uh, I believe that slowly but surely it's growing. But at the end of the day, I'm trusting the process. I'm not trying to become a big YouTuber, but I'm taking my time, taking my small steps. All right. Uh, choo -choo -choo -choo. One second. I just want to get to these questions. Perfect timing. Um, okay. I'm on lunch break. Ah, Arthur, what's going on? Alfredo, yeah, with those mods and good tune, you could have a mid 11s car and reliable deadly. Yes, yes. Um, Flame is definitely right. Um, you could be an 11 second category, or I don't even like to say really 11 second category, but trapping 118 to 121 to 122 on pump gas is really good. That's all above like M stock M4 CS territory because CS is trap, um, trap right around one, right around the same mile an hour. Uh, but that's because they also have a better transmission. But 
when you sit there and look at like Hellcats, let's say you use a Hellcat for instance, Hellcats trap um right around 124, 125. So that's in a quarter mile. It's not bad. So you kind of almost on par with a Hellcat from factory. That's that's on factory tune. Of course, when they get tuned, you know, it's a different story. Uh, let me see. Uh, Zaya, yes, supercharged. Okay. Okay, Isaiah, I'm sorry. I got to speed up a little bit. I'm six minutes behind. Um, if it's supercharged, to be honest, bro, I love the wine of it, but what is the limit? You're going to have to port the. I believe somebody in the RS5 recently or S5 or S4 or something recently got into 10s with his uh, supercharged six-cylinder um, vehicle, but he had to port the blower. He had to go to a little uh, smaller pulley. I think he was on meth and I, he was on E85, so... I mean, the car seems like it's really reliable, but I mean, I don't know the performance game with Audis. Um, hopefully, they're just as reliable. My friends, <laughs> Audis, Audis he dealt with weren't too good, but hopefully, the supercharged one is good. So I can see you just porting out the blower, pulling out the blower, smaller pulley, and hopefully, the motor takes good on boost and see if you want to run E. That car would probably be a problem. I don't see why it wouldn't be. But then at the end of the day, when you think about turbos and supercharges, you know, the, there's so so much more of an up, upside with turbos and superchargers, at least on smaller six cylinder vehicles. V8 is a totally uh, separate story. Um, choo -choo -choo -choo. Captain, what roads do you recommend and how much will it cost? Second question, do you think the front side wall tire bump causes the brake pedal vibration above? Yeah, bro. I mean, like I said to you earlier, Captain, I don't know if you missed it. If you have a uh, pretty much a broken Cordian tire, yes, it's, it will cause vibration. Yes, but you also have to see if it's smooth across the tire face because I used to work on tires and wheels and brake pads and all that stuff. I used to do all this stuff already, whatever. So you got to see if it's smooth. If not, if it's not smooth there, you have to look at the wheel. If the wheel is out around, is it bent? Is it warped? It, do you um is the wheel balanced properly? You may not. You might need to have your wheels rebalanced. You never know. So that's my recommendation. Just go take a look at your tires. We'll see if there's any visual bends or uh, bends or uh, bumps on the tire on the surface face. After that, get your tires, uh, wheel, get your wheel balance done just to see if that your wheels are out of balance. Um, Zach, you think getting single piece drive shaft is worth them? Wait, I, he had a first question. Um, what rotors do you recommend? I really don't have any recommendation on rotors. As early in this video, I said if it comes to regular blank rotors, drilled or slotted, slotted and drilled or drilled. I, after having all of them on my old uh, older cars I used to have, I would just get blanks and just get with a better brake pad. And my better brake pad I would recommend if you do have an Infinity vehicle, if you do like to do a lot of spirited driving and drive with confidence, Hawk 5.0 pads. Because I've had different EBCs and different Hawks, uh, Ecobeno brakes, Sport brakes, AutoZone brakes, Wagner, um, Advanced Auto brakes. Like I've definitely tried a bunch. I just haven't did Stop Tech and RS1 concepts. All right. Sorry. Um, Zach. You think getting a single piece draft shaft is worth the money? I would say, Zach, to be honest, that is something that you do as an accessory modification. So what I mean by that? Um, right now, my, I don't have a, 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 a single piece draft shaft. I don't see the sense in getting it for myself. I'm like, eh, I don't need it. Like, I don't see the sense in getting it. But a, drive, a single piece draft shaft does regain some of the wheel horsepower you're losing through drivetrain loss. I don't know exactly what the difference is. Because no, like it's not like AMS or Concept Z was like, all right, this down on the car with the two piece drive shaft, and now down with the one piece, and so what the difference was. But from what I know, it does lighten up the load at least I think four to six pounds on the drive shaft. You get rid of the carrier bearing. There's a rubber bearing that's between or flange that's between the two or drive shafts, and that actually takes away some of the twist and brings down the amount of torque. And that stuff does fail. Probably gonna fail in my car once you get to a higher amount of torque. So to relieve that, so you don't run into that carry bearing issue, so you can lighten up the drive shaft and regain some wheel horsepower, it is recommended, but I think it's kind of expensive because it comes from AMS. I think these guys charge too much. If you try to get a drive shaft from for Mustangs and all these other vehicles that are, they're like half the price. I don't understand that. They're half the price. Drive shaft is making the same metal. It's the same metal, the same drive shaft. It's just that, oh, it's going on an infinity vehicle. Let's just add five hundred dollars more on top of it. There's a sense of that. I'm sorry, guys. I just get heated about not saving money. <laughs> uh, I got I'm getting carried away. Um, all right. Uh, somebody asked me some more questions here. 
Captain, the cause of the sour bump was a hole in the road. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Juan, I currently have a 2.5 inch straight pipe with stock down pipes and still a little quiet for me. Wow, really? Huh. Everyone's a little different. Yeah, some people really like noise. Usually when you have straight pipe, uh, straight pipe car, it's pretty loud. Uh, will lower down pipes make it too loud? Yes, it's going to make it louder. You're, getting, you're removing a lot of the catalyst, so more noise can now exit the exhaust. And you may not like how it sounds, but what I recommend, if you do want to try it, buy Megan lower down pipes because they're only $150. Get them installed. They're easy to install under an hour. And then if you don't like the sound, you can just take it off. And you only lost like a buck fifty compared to go buying, let's say, AMS lower down pipes or AAM down pipes like six hundred dollars, and no one's you don't like it. So that's my recommendation. Also, if you do get low down pipes, you can just add resonators too. You can always do that, bro. You can always just add resonators. That'll bring down the noise a little bit. Um, okay. How do I know if my turbo is, oil is leaking? Um, I really visually, in my own case, I saw that my turbo was. I smelt oil like a smell of oil coming into the cabin bay so i just you know pulled, took off the wheel took a look at it and i noticed that i saw oil on some of the components on the driver's side and that's how i knew i had an oil leak from the feed and the drain in this case um if you have oil leaking from the turbo seals or bearings inside the only way you would really know is if you're keep doing keep checking your oil every few weeks and you've seen the oil keeps going down and down but that doesn't mean it's coming from the turbo because usually it would go off the exhaust if it was coming on the hot side. It may be going into the motor, but everyone's car is a bit different. So I don't know what to tell you. you just monitor it. Check your oil every uh, couple thousand miles. Not a couple thousand miles. Check it every, I would say check your oil every two, three hundred miles. Just to just double check and see where it's at. Um, whew, I got to speed this one up. How do I, okay, 35 PSI or get the F out of here. You wow! Oh, why did the speed up? I'm ten minutes behind. Uh, what's up with the air that at the AirPlay module you have? Is Navix or something like that? Is it true plug and play? Um, I don't really like it. To be in my previous videos, I talked about and I came up with the, the video. Um, honestly, I don't like it because I do have an Android. I know. And on top of that, with the Android is plug in. There's other um Android uh there's other interfaces out there right now from other companies that are completely wireless. And they're more intuitive. And the one from Navix, sorry if they're watching, um, that they don't have this as a touch screen on the top. Other people have this as a, as a touch screen. So you can try the other ones. I'm not going to lie. I've been looking at the Phoenix version Mark III or Mark IV now. And their revisions got way better. And they seem like they're doing really good quality now. So I may end up getting that later down the line because I'm going to keep the car unless something crazy comes out. Because at the end of the day, like, just just being honest with you, like I, I really like how it looks, like the one simple screen. It looks really nice. I do like that. I've always liked it since back in the day, but it wasn't fast enough. The, the RAM was too slow back in the day, and it glitched a lot, so I didn't want to deal with it. Um, okay, cool. Do, 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 do. How, is the Q, how is the Q50, Q60 better than an R35 GTR? Um, I, wow, that's a really deep question. Uh, if you guys don't know, you could actually go to my channel. I did rent a 2017 Nissan GTR for my 30th birthday, and I had a blast with it. I had a blast with the car, so I had some good seat time behind the GTR. And that GTR was one of the reasons why I actually got this Q50 next to my homeboy Stretch, who actually had got a Q50. Well, got me the got me the twin turbo car because I really love the GTR twin turbo feeling. So I said, "Oh, baby GTR, let me get the, the new Q50." But anyway, um, in my opinion, not a fact. This is just my opinion. From me to you, the R35, and you said the question is, how is it better? One is more up to date. Q50, Q60 is more up to date. I'm talking about looks here. Let's just be honest. Yes, the Q50 looks has been out since 2014. The GTR has been out since 2008. That's like a six, seven year spread. Okay, let's just get that out. But also on top of that, um, I would say newer technology. There's more newer technology in this VR30 rather than the VR38, even though the VR38 is just still a better, more monster of a motor. It seems like we went more, more uh, digital with the VR30 rather than, rather than more of the GTR, which technically was more digital back in the day. But if you look at it now, it's still more analog. That's what I would say. Um, 
I would say standard features would just be a little bit more up to date. But even then, the Q50's infotainment until 2020 was pretty trash. I, I actually like the GTR's infotainment because it reminds me of my G37 Maxima because I just like the way it worked. Everything had knobs and buttons. It worked. Um, I would say just the Q... I'll, honestly, I'll leave it at the Q60. I just think the Q60, which I was supposed to bring out a video about it because one of my um, Instagram followers... Asked me about it, and I said I'll make a video, and I'm gonna have to, so I'm gonna do it for him because I forgot. He wanted me to make a video on what should a person purchase a used Q60 or a used GTR. So, and just talk about the pros and cons. But to just finally say it, the Q60 just looks more sexy. It's a sexier car. Like, it just, you look at it like, wow, this car is sexy. The GTR is fugly. I like it because of GTR. You like it because of GTR. But at some point, you still look at it and say, hey, it's still a GTR. I'd rather pull up in a Q50 or Q60 if I'm going out with my lady or my partner, whatever the case might be, and an Infiniti Q50 or Q60 because it's just more elegance, it's just that type of car. Someone had said that um the Q60 is a uh, a single uh, a single Cougars car or something like that, and I started laughing. But yes, I did think the car just, honestly, it just comes down to looks. This performance there, but it ain't going to be as much as a GTR. So that's just the reason why. And I feel like I've been on this question too long, so I got to continue. Sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. What is the limit at the Q50 horsepower? Right now, the, the limit at the VR30 right now hasn't really been hit yet. Uh, no one has hit the limit on stock block yet. But currently, the right now, unofficially, um, let's leave out the shop cars like AMS, uh, RT tuning. Let's leave those guys out. Let's talk about regular people with their regular cars. Right now, it's held by Greg at 607, 607 all wheel drive horsepower on E60 mix on pure turbos, stock motor and stock trans with upgraded pure turbos. So that's an under 600 pounds of torque. So that's what a limit is currently at this moment. No one has jumped above that yet. So we still don't know what's going to take for these for these motors to go. We don't we don't really know yet unless it's a bad tuner or a bad tune. OK, you guys got me for 10 more minutes, so I'm going to just blow through these questions. I have a squeaky bell. I only hear it when I hit boost and then it goes away. Um, I can't hear it on idle or no more driving. So, Mark, change the belt. The belt is 60, 70 dollars. There's only one brand. This is the Nissan Infinity brand. Buy it, change it. You need a three eight repeat, a three eight ratchet or breaker bar. And then you'll you can change it on your own. It takes 15 minutes. If not, take it to a mechanic, a regular mechanic. Just give them belt. Says I need this change. He'll probably put on a lift, take off the understrod, and it's literally an automatic tensioner. You'll put it down on it, slot it in, and then you'll just slip off the belt. It's easy. I'm telling you. I wish I would have did it on video when I did it, but I don't have a squeaky belt. Just pay for it. Don't try to get under warranty because they're not going to change it. Um, Diamond, thanks for the cash can help. I feel that. Thanks for taking the time to answer my questions. What makes the gears transmission what holds out? What makes the gears transmission what holds out? I don't know what you mean, bro. You got to explain a little bit different. What offset you recommend for flush look? If you're stock height, like a nine, if you're not, if it's Q50, like a 9.5, 35, 40 offset, maybe in a 45 offset. Um, if you're lower, you can still stick with that same that same spec, but you want it to be a little bit more sticked out, you go like a, a 9.5 on a 25, or you can do a 10.5 on like a 45 too, offset. It's really up to you. You can play with it a little bit, but you can also check out Fitment Industries, repeat Fitment Industries, or join the Q50, Q60 uh, group on Facebook because there's a lot of people in there who post their uh, rides up too. See the Android life. <laughs> they had to hit it. <laughs> um, Scott. I just rolled up on Texas QK. I checked out the Red Alpha and Nordstrom. They look amazing, worth the 1,500-mile trip. I'm glad you're going to have a great time there, uh, Scott. Definitely check out some of the people. Uh, it seems like they're going to have a lot of fun out there, so they'll definitely check out check out their, their car. I hope their car breaks into nines because it's, it's a low 10-second car now. Um, ju -ju -ju. Matt, I got the Navix with the iPhone. I still have to, to plug it in because the Bluetooth is too weak. Really, Matt? Wow. See, look, I didn't know that. I know that people who have the iPhone, it just literally was just connecting. At least when he did it on his iPhone, it was, it was seamless. So maybe maybe it's not weak. Maybe you just need to move the device. I don't know. But definitely hit up Navix about that and let them know. Maybe they could definitely work with you. 
Okay, uh, Scott, as far as performance, I'll tell you the Red Alpha 60 is ho is hoping for nines, and Nordstrom Q50 is, is looking for tens. To be honest, uh, that Q50 is fast, and he's going on street tires. I, I don't know why, but it's like 700 wheel. But eh, if he had better tires, a uh, flame, George, not Greg. I'm sorry, George, not Greg. Apologize about that. Yeah, George, that's probably George watching. <laughs> uh, Patel, hey, Boos, what you recommend? Mickey Thompson's ESs or SSR? I'm not a drag radio uh, person. I am looking for a set of drag radios at the current moment to learn. But one of those, I believe, are slicks you're speaking about. The SSRs, aren't those slicks? So a more of not a slick, but more, isn't that more of like a damn near a slick tire? It's just that it's still DOT rated. I really can't tell you which one to pick there. I I can't tell you, bro, at Patel. I, don't, I really honestly don't know. Um, thank you, man. Okay, Flame Integrity. How long does this squeak last for? Is it only for a couple seconds? Um, which one of my turbos went out? I heard squeakish, uh, squeakish noises a split second after the turbo spool, and then the last couple seconds of acceleration, my turbos are going bad. Okay, cool. You like to hear that the seats dissolve. The That's true. Q50, Q60. I'm too very confused with you just saying that, bro. And Miss Cass, uh, that's exactly what happened to my car at around 3,000. I heard a squeaky sound, so I took it to the deal and they fixed it. Yeah, sometimes the deal would fix it if you can replicate it, but to be quite honest, sometimes they'll just say, oh, that's that's normal. And I really hate that that, that they do that. But if you get that squeaky sound right around 25 to like 4,000 RPM, it's like, eh, and then it goes away. Um, when I had it, I changed. I ended up changing the belt, even though my belt looked perfectly fine. And once I changed the belt, it went away. I said, you know, what, let me just spend the little sixty, seventy dollars and see if it goes away. And once I saw it went away, I was like, oh, there it goes. Um, and Captain, I I have Dunlap flat tires when I got the car and it rough. Yeah, Dunlap tires stink. The original factory ones, they're trash. Don't don't. They're like driving on ice skates. Get rid of those. Um, you could try other continental brands. Michelin's, of course, are one of the best uh, old season tires out there. Um, more of a budget tire like the one I use on my summer tires are Barum Bravarius 3HM. Barum Bravarius 3HM. I may have a link in my description below or something to them. Um, I've had them for about 15,000 miles. I, maybe I should do at least a review of them now because I've had them in so long. I live in Brooklyn, New York. We have crappy roads, too. So and I do hit potholes and everything, and I do drive fast. So I could, and I do have camber wear, so I could probably give you like a fifteen thousand mile review of them. Um, do, 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 one second. Okay, cool. I'm sorry, Patel. I really wish I could have gave you more of an answer there. Uh, I do apologize, man. But some things I just don't know. I just don't know or don't have any experience of it. So I'd rather just say I don't know. Come on, Android. <laughs> All right. Um. Laugh Law Spot, let me drive on the 21st. Okay, cool. Have you ever been able to measure the final speed? Or if so, where's the limit? So I, I assume the top speed of the car. I believe our car is rated at 149 uh, as our top speed limited, governor limited. But people, usually when you get a tune, they could just got, get rid of that governor. And there's people I know that went above 160. But I don't know how much the car would run, uh, would, the gear would run out to. And there's no way for me to even try to test that out in Brooklyn, New York. Um, for some of my people who do watch that are in um, overseas and you guys are in the desert type of places with the empty roads. Yeah, I've had a few guys hit me up and I do appreciate you guys who hit me up and ask me those questions. Um, you guys top those cars out. <laughs> just fold up, fold down to the ground, just a 149 the whole time. But it's pretty cool. Uh, have you ever been able to? OK. Uh, yeah, the, the BK streets are terrible. I might laugh out. Who who are you? Ha ha ha. Um, check the FB, bro. Um, okay, cool. Thanks as always. Hey, Boost never knows how Boost. How you doing, man? Appreciate that, Ducey. Um, thanks for all the great content. Thank you, Avara. Appreciate that very much. So yeah, guys. Um, so quick update. I'm not gonna answer any more questions at this moment. Sorry. Uh, but honestly, you guys. Um. I do have slight oil leak again. Yes, in my latest videos, I did change the oil drain gasket, but there is a feed gasket and I can't get to it. 
I, I thought it was a drain, but it's actually a feed. Maybe I looked at, I took the whole intake off. If you have, if you have me on IG, I took the whole intake off, took a look at everything. Um, the turbo seemed like it's fine in good condition. It's not leaking from between the turbos. It just seemed like the feed is leaking and I honestly, uh, can't get to it, but I can't verify as the feed. It could be the actual gasket to the turbo it might be leaking at the top, but I can't visually see it. Cause there's, there's just no way the, the turbo is inside of, um, a heat shield. So that's what sucks. So I don't know what I'm going to do in the next few weeks. It's not like my car can't be driven. I'm driving my car. It's a small oil leak, but I'd rather get rid of this now before I, it gets any worse because I'm going to be going to a few events, the track, and knowing that I have a leaking turbo, a turbo uh, feed line, that could be an issue down the line. So um, otherwise than that, guys, you already know how to support me and support the channel. Boosted Motion, I got my uh, merch below in the Teespring account. Also, on top of that, if you don't follow me, follow me on Boost in Motion on IG. Boost in Motion. You guys ask me questions there. Also, on top of that, you can um, you can follow me at uh, Boost Motion on Instagram and Facebook. And you guys already know, man. I just hope to see you guys soon. Um, hope you guys are safe wherever you're at because of this whole Corona thing that's going around. Um, to me, I take it as the flu. It's just the flu, but some people are getting really sick and losing their lives of it. And I, and I don't want to be a person that gets sick and then give it to like my mother or my aunt or anyone who's older or a kid. So even in my own self, I just try to wash my hands, make sure I'm extra clean because I don't want to make anybody sick or be a person to pass it on to somebody else. And also, if you like buying flight tickets, <laughs> flight tickets are really cheap right now too. Everything's uh, getting kind of crazy in the world right now. The stock market is going like this. I have stocks. Um... It's just crazy nowadays in the world. But otherwise than that, guys, I just want to close this one out. I do appreciate all the time you uh, all the times you uh, guys just watch my videos and everything. If there's any questions I didn't answer, send me an email at Boost Emotion on Gmail or send me the question at Boost Emotion on IG. Or if you have Facebook, Boost Emotion on Facebook for any questions I missed. Otherwise than that, guys, I'm going to check you out later. Appreciate it. You have a good day.